Today I'm going to go through an example setup and workflow for something like a PhD where you're going to be reading a lot of academic literature and wanting to keep track of all the info that you're acquiring. And this workflow I'm going through today is built around two tables. One to upload all of the papers and other reference materials and the other to have all of the different tags which will be collecting all of your knowledge and information around. And so here we are in a new workspace. Um, I'm just going to delete all of these pages so that we start from scratch. And let's get started with one of the tables, the sources table. So we're going to add a new page and choose table type, give it a title. And then we can drag and drop any PDF files that we have of the papers to upload them into the workspace. So I'm just going to do that for several papers that I've downloaded. Let's drag and drop them into the table. This little notification bar will pop up and each of the papers will be uploaded and each one will be added as a new row into the table. These papers have all got their kind of downloaded file name, uh, but, but these papers are all around hydrogels. So I'm going to set up my tags table and call it kind of topics and themes. And I'm just going to add in some of the topics around which I'm going to want to collect information from as I read through papers. So for this particular flow, I'm going to add in a few tags. So I'll start off with those to get me going and I can always add more as I'm going through the papers. So the reason I've set up the tags in a table for this workflow is because on Protolist, tags that you want to use across your workspace need to be added as pages. So by having a table, I've got all of the tags that I might want to have and look at and refer to all in one place. So if I jump back to the sources table and open up one of these papers, I might just update the title there. And then as I work my way through the paper, I can highlight the text and then this capture atom button will appear. I can click this and what it does is lift that piece of text out of the page so that I can access it and view it from anywhere within my workspace. I don't have to jump back into this file and scroll through to find the highlight if I want to refer to it at any point in the future. So that text has been pulled out and is appearing in this atom box. Um, I can add tags to an atom by clicking here and it will give me a list of all the pages in my workspace so I can scroll through till I get to the topics and themes table and use the relevant tags that I want to do by clicking on them here. Or I can just start typing the name of the tag and when the page comes up, select it. And so this atom is now saved and it has tags to hydrogel and gelation. And I can continue going through highlighting and capturing atoms and adding those tags to start to build up that information around those topics of interest. And as I add more information into my workspace, I might start to realize that there are other tags that I might want to be grouping my info around. And I can add those tags on the fly by just typing in the name of the tag and then adding it into my workspace as a new page. So as an example, if I wanted to add scaffold as a topical theme, I could type it out and then click this add scaffold as new page option. And then I can choose the location of where that page or tag will be created in my workspace. So because I want this to be a tag, I'm going to add it into the topics and themes table, which is where all my other tags are located. And so then the tag is created and this atom has been tagged with that new tag. If I jump back to the topics and themes table, you will see that the scaffold tag has been added into that table here and there is an atom that I've captured and tagged to it also displaying in this atoms column here. So to talk more about how the atoms work in this workflow, um, I'm just going to take a moment to capture some more atoms from across the other papers that I've uploaded here. So I've now been through all of those sources that I uploaded, capturing atoms and making use of tags throughout. So my sources table now looks a little bit like this. Um, to delete any properties in your source table, you just click on the property header and then use delete property. Um, we're not really making use of subpages here, so I'll get rid of that one. You can also use the properties in a table to add any further info that you might want to have to hand about the sources that you're adding into your table. 
things like the year of publication, the journal, the first author, and anything that you would like to have in your system. But you will also see that in the atoms property, there is now a list of all of the atoms that I have captured within this particular source. Um, so I've got the title, where the atom has come from at the top in blue, the atom text here, and then across the bottom, there are some tags and further info about the atom. Um, so obviously this atom has been captured and it's you know, displaying in the table where the source is, but this first one um, is the source link. So wherever you, you view this atom in the workspace, this will always be the first tag that displays and, and is a link back to the original source of the atom. Um, any further tags that you've added to an atom will display after a hashtag, um, so you're able to see where you have tagged and connected your atoms to. And so this atom will display here because it was captured in this source page, but it will also display as an atom for hydrogel and gelation. So if I now jump back into that topics and themes table, um, again, I've got this uh, extra sub pages property. So let me just get rid of that because the atoms are really what we care about here. Um, I can open up the atom list in full screen. Um, so they've got a bit more space to scroll through and browse the atoms that have been collected around or tagged to system. Um, so you will see I've got a list of all the atoms that I captured here. Um, taking a quick look at the source tags, you will see that they're all from different places, but they're all pulled together because they share the system tag here. So if I jump back into that topics and themes table, so by using the tags, I'm starting to collect all of the atoms and nuggets of info from across all the different sources that I'm reading around a particular topic or theme. What we can also make use of tags to do is to build kind of uh, atom overviews. So if I jump back to the sources table and we add another atoms property here, we can make use of atom filters. So if I wanted to view all of the atoms that were tagged to methods from all of these different papers, I could add a filter around the methods tag from the topics and themes table. And what this will do is display all the atoms that have been captured from a particular source that have been tagged to methods. So all of the methods that I had captured from these papers would be viewable in this column. You can add as many filters as you want by adding further atoms properties. You can also add multiple pages to your filter, so you could filter by combinations of your tags. And so the other benefit of using atoms is that you can search through them too. So if you go to the all pages section, there'll be a list of all of the pages that have been added into your workspace, as well as all of the atoms that have been captured from all of the pages in your workspace here. So if there was a particular nugget of info that you're looking for, but you couldn't quite remember you know, where you tagged it to or what paper it came from, you can search by keyword and this will search through your pages as well as the atoms that you've captured. So as an example, I know that I read something about hydrogels drying out. Um, so if I started typing drying out, it will search through all the pages and atoms and you'll see that I've managed to locate that atom very quickly. So I can click on it and then I can jump back to the original page and it will show me exactly where I captured that atom so I can read around, gain some further context. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an intro to how you can build out a system in Protolist with a little bit of a flavor of how the different features can help you to find the information that you need as and when you want it.